Welcome to lecture four, in which we're going to combine operations now. We talked last time about a translation vector, and uh, we're kind of heading towards uh, lattice nets. So we talked about how if we have t1 and t2 that can't be parallel, uh, and much the same way, uh, that geometric argument that, well, if they're parallel, you're just producing another set of points that don't overlap with the linear array created by t1, and so it can't be that. We have to have t2 at an angle. Uh, to T1. And we came up with a primitive lattice. The second thing we're going to do is say, okay, fine, so we got one lattice that way. Let's try to make lattices now with more regularity because you figure, look, I'm going to fill space. You know, obviously there's some sort of um, regularity and symmetry here, right? So one way to do that is the other operation we have. Uh, besides translation, and we, we ran out of options, right? We got that one simple 2D net. But Let's now take the translation operation and combine it with um, a rotation. And, and by using those two operations, we should be able to fill space with some sort of more unique uh, nets with, with higher symmetry. Um, to give you an idea, maybe another way of looking at it is, um, you know, uh, I can't just have, here, here I have this space, and you know, if I pick random points, you know, that's not a lattice, right? So they, they can be regular. In the other example, I made it regular because I said, all right, I have T1, then I have T2, and we can define then this sort of oblique, uh, simple net, okay? Well, that's fine. Uh, we know there's another rotation, though, and another uh, operation, which is rotation. So now we say this, and then we say, aha, what happens if I rotate through alpha? Will I create some unique nets that have higher symmetry than just, you know, this primitive one? Can I can I understand how to fill? Because if I make a rule for this where these have to be lattice points, then uh, I should be able to define what those what those potential lattices are. So that's what we're going to do. So let's combine now two operations to create some more nets. And we'll combine that translation vector with a rotation operation. And one method to do that is to say, look, I'm going to uh, go forward. And at the end of that translation vector, I'm going to rotate through alpha. And it'll be another translation vector. And then that has to be some combination of t's. Otherwise, I'm not lining up with the rest of the lattice. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So let's draw A, which is the point we're starting off at, and we do one operation. This is the translation operation. I'm going to combine it with a rotation. I can draw the same one. That's also T, because remember, I'm only having one vector and one rotation. Then I'm going to do a similar thing here. And that has to be allowed as well, right? So all I'm doing is, from this original point, I'm saying I'm moving out with T, and I'm going to end up there. Now, if these points here are lattice points, then this is allowed, right? And remember I said I did the operation alpha, and remember that uh, at each point here, it's actually A alpha we're doing. That's the, you know, really I should say this is A, for this one it's A alpha, and this one it's like B alpha. This is a different point, B rotating through, but the angle is the same. The point is that I'm combining it with a rotation. Now, let's make a mathematical statement related to this, that well, these will be lattice points if they're an integral number of t, right? See, this is t below. 
So p is an integer. And so if they're an in integral number of t, it's also the same thing, filling space, right, with the translation vector. So let's break this down into a little equation now because I can drop these guys down. And this also must be pt. And actually, if you look at this carefully, you'll see there's a little trigonometry here. And that's that this is t cosine alpha, and so is this. This little piece there. So what we can do is say t minus, and these are magnitudes. I'm mixing my, these should be vectors and magnitudes with little things along it there. But t minus 2t cosine alpha has to equal p times magnitude of t. And So this tells you that cosine alpha equals 1 minus p over 2, where p is an integer. So those are all the possible solutions. So let's, uh, let's go through them. So I cleared the, um, the screen here so I can now uh, show you those different uh, p values just to uh, make sure you, you know what I'm referring to. I will draw a very small rendition of the of what I just did over in the corner here, where, you know, oops, the general idea. So we had some point here that we had the alpha, and we had a point B where we rotated. This is translation T, and this is T, and this is T. And then we said that we need this to be some fraction like that, right? So let's go through these now. P equals 4, if I were just to guess, just to show you some boundary conditions. This equals minus 3 halves, which doesn't work because, no, because uh, cosine alpha can't be greater than one, plus or minus one. Uh, so obviously let's look at p equals three, and we have cosine alpha equals uh, minus one, alpha therefore equals 180 degrees. To see that we can do our, our little translation over on the right, you know, uh, essentially what it means is that when I actually do a complete um, alpha all I get is the next translation point, right, so this is where I began with A, but then I I actually had a rotation of 180 degrees in alpha. It still works because actually it, it lines up with that. Or another way to think about it, if you wanted to, was you know equivalently, I could rotate out this way. So it's a 180 degree rotation. Now what we're going to do is um, what this 180 degree rotation means is that I could rotate back and everything better be symmetric. So if I had an object here, like this, right, that's going to rotate through and be other, on the other side. Sorry, it's exactly where this T is. But it's going to look like that, right, because it rotates 120 degrees this way and 120, I'm sorry, 180 degrees this way, 180 degrees that way, right? 
So we're going to represent this because you see it does look like a lens because they all represent two dimensional features. So this is going to be represented by this kind of lens because it's twofold axis right along here. Right? So P equals two cosine alpha equals minus one half. And the way to see that is I'll go for here minus one half of a cosine. I guess you guys are not remembering. It goes like that one minus one pi over two, which is ninety degrees. This is pi. Right, so pi of minus one half says we're over here, which actually ends up being 120 degrees, right? So what that means is that um, here's my first vector, and uh, now I'm going to be 120 degrees this way. <laughs> Not a very good draw here. And my lengths aren't the same, but basically what it shows you is that what it shows you is that um, you have um, two P two T's here, 120 degrees, and that works. And um, if you were to you know finish uh, looking at this. Uh, this would have another 120 degree symmetry there, and so you would get this sort of triangle, three-fold symmetry. Right? You can see that because 360 divided by 120 is three rotations. So you know, alpha here equals 120 degrees, and um, uh, we represent that by a three-fold axis here. I'm going to clear this because when, when this screen gets pixelated like this, it means that uh, I'm running out of um, memory just because I got a lot of writing on this. So let me keep on going here after I erase the pen. So that's that one. And then let's look at P equals 1, which is cosine alpha equals 0. alpha equals 90. This makes sense again almost intrinsically because remember we started at A. At B we rotated and at A we rotated. I'm drawing this. It should be a square but anyway I ran out of room up here. And so this obviously is T so P equals 1 which is you know what we had you could tell this is 90 degrees. It has to be one because if you just go straight up, then PT, PST equals one. So it's almost intuitive. And of course, we'll represent a full four, four fold axis by, by that. And then P equals zero cosine alpha equals one half. And then now that. 60 degrees, and that gives us the triangle, the simple solution that we identified before. Where, obviously, if we rotate to 60 degrees, and all these angles come to the same point right here. Right, and so if we finish drawing that one out, you can see like this basically makes a hexagon. Right, so we're going to represent that by uh, that. Right, so uh, to summarize, uh, we have uh, on the other page we have developed 
equals 3, which was a, a twofold, and we had p equals 2, oops, 2, uh, which ended up being a triangle. And then we have this and this. Notice how there's no fivefold. So as we went from p equals 3 to 0, uh, we end up with a twofold axis, a threefold axis, a fourfold axis, and a sixfold. But there is no solution for a fivefold axis. And so you won't see a pentagon. And the reason is that the equation tells us we cannot fill space with a pentagon. And so that is not an operation you can do in combination with a translation. Uh, so uh, there we have it. Uh, those are our rotational axes that uh, are compatible with a single translation vector.